My daughter's gonna grow up and be like, oh, sociopaths, my dad's one of those. He likes to sew. <laughs> Cool Pixel Gun user 123, I would like you to know that I really appreciate all the comments and all the questions that you ask, and I thought about responding to a couple of them, but then I was like, well, I bet if I had never touched a sewing machine before, I probably have the exact same questions as this guy, so why don't I, why don't I just answer all of them for all of you guys? You should click the join button below. We have candy. I'm SD. I don't like long intros. Let's, um... Let's do this. Question number one. In your Marvel t-shirt tailoring vid, you set your stitch tension to three, but in your stitch tension video, you said that for a t-shirt, your stitch tension needs to be set at about like six or seven. What's up with that, man? Well, here's what's up. I, uh... <laughs> I made a mistake, my bad. But in all reality and in all seriousness, your stitch tension on your machine is hands down the most overthought and overrated setting on your machine compared to anything else. And I get it, I was that person where I thought that my stitch tension had to be set to an exact setting every single time, and if I didn't do that, then I was gonna mess up my project. But it's not like that at all. You're gonna end up learning your machine as you go along, and you're gonna kinda figure out what it can handle, what it can't handle, um, what its stitch tension should be set to, what it should not be set to. And it's really, it's gonna tell you whether or not it's set properly or whether it's not set properly. Let's say you are tailoring some clothes right now at home, and you're noticing some issues with your stitch tension, like, um, like seam puckering or stitch puckering or skip stitches or bun stitches, things kind of along those lines. Well, that means that you probably don't have your stitch tension set properly, so kind of uh, adjust it accordingly, start sewing again, see what happens, and the next thing you know, boom, you're, you're probably good. And well, there's also the fact that on my two machines, my Nechi FA16 and my brother ST371HD, uh, they both only have upper stitch tension settings, they don't have lower stitch tension settings. Um, you're gonna come across some machines that do have both, and at that point you're gonna have to kind of, you know, configure both of them to make them both work together simultaneously, but if you just have one up here for the upper stitch tension, Eh, it's, it's, it's all good. You can, you can kind of wing it. And I'm also going to elaborate on this part in another question that you asked later on. But the reason why I, um, I like to talk about stitch tension and tell you how to set it properly is because really at the end of the day, I want to make sure that I'm teaching you right. I don't want to skip steps. Um, I remember when I started out, I didn't know any of this stuff. So I was like, well, if you... You, you, this, the stitch tension, like you didn't, you didn't mention that at all. So is it important? Is it not important? I would much rather have someone teach me exactly what it is, exactly how it works, exactly what to set it to, and then as time goes on, realize that it's not all that important versus the opposite where they never acknowledge it at all. And I'm just, you know, flying through all these projects. Everything's going good, great. I practiced on a couple of t-shirts. I practiced on a big old bed sheet. And I think that I have it down. And I think I've got my machine settings down. And then I decide to dive into something more expensive or something that I really like, a garment that I really like. And then next thing I know, I messed it up because the tutorials that I was watching never ever elaborated on that. So the too long didn't read version is, well, that's why my stitch tension was set to that in one video and that in another video, because at the end of the day, eh, eh, it doesn't really matter that much. I take that back, it does, but you get what I'm saying. You're gonna learn your machine. Oh, I like this question a lot. I can't get actual sewing pins at the moment. Will, uh, will normal pins work? Like not ones that I'm putting in the wall, but just any kind of ordinary run of the mill pins, will those work? Yes, absolutely. You can use normal pins if you want to, because yo, I used sidewalk chalk in the beginning. For the longest time, I stole my daughter's sidewalk chalk. She must have been, she was like two or three. And when I started tailoring, I would just take the big old box of sidewalk chalk and I would try and choose the colors that were lighter, the ones that I wasn't really worried about staining my clothes. So I would choose like the white chalk or the green chalk or the light red chalk. And I would just draw a line on my garment and I would just sew right along there. And in a lot of ways, using chalk is, well, it's a lot easier than using pins because you don't have to remove anything as you go along. Now, the downside to using something like chalk or using anything to just kind of put a mark on your garment and use that as a guide as you sew along is your two pieces, the, let's say you're sewing a t-shirt, you've got the front of your t-shirt here, 
you've got the back of it or the bottom of it. Well, there's nothing that's holding them together so they can slide around like that. So you're gonna end up having your seam or your line right on top there. But if they're sliding around on each other, one moment it's right here, well, it kind of slid. So now your, your new stitch or your new seam, it's, it's over here. Oh, I thought my audio wasn't recording for a second. If you are new, I made a video on how you can slim all of your hoodies at home, which you can check out in the card. And everybody in the comments was like, yo man, why didn't you just use safety pins? Can you use safety pins? Yeah, you can absolutely use safety pins. Um, like we've already, already kind of been getting at, you can use any kind of pin that you want to, but the downside to using something like a safety pin is it will hold its place. You can use it as a marker on your garment, whatever it is you're tailoring, but the problem with a safety pin is it's you're gonna end up kind of fiddling with it to get it in and out of your garment as you're sewing along. So you're gonna end up going with your sewing machine, just sewing, and then you gotta stop, and you gotta take the pin out and fiddle with it, and then you keep going, and then you stop, and you fiddle with the next pin and take it out. It's just really cumbersome. It's really labor intensive. Yes, in a pinch, you can do it. They will work, but eh, I wouldn't. I would just, eh, if that's all you got, sure. But otherwise, mm -mm. Ooh, this is a good one. I like this question a lot. SD, I could only find 90-14 sewing needles. They didn't have 80-12. Is that okay? Can I tailor things like t-shirts and dress shirts? Um, things like, you know, joggers, fleece, flannel, things like that along those lines. Well, let's dial it back a little bit here. I made an entire video on sewing machine needles already, but the too long didn't read version is this. The needles that you bought are made for uh, thicker materials, made for things like denim, leather, canvas, things along those lines. Anything with a 90 at the beginning of it means that the, um, the, what's the, the radius or the circumference of the needle is really wide versus 80, it's not as wide. So it's gonna be able to penetrate your garment really, really well. And that's all good and fine. And they kind of sort of are interchangeable. You can use a thicker needle on thinner materials like a t-shirt, but here's the problem that you're gonna end up running into. The problem you're gonna run into is that since the needle is going to be bigger on a thicker needle, that 90-14 needle you have, it's gonna leave a bigger hole. And you might not think that that's a very big deal. It's not gonna sound like it's a very big deal, but I've done that before where I have tailored a, oh man, I think it was my joggers video. I think I used a denim needle in that video. We've, we've tailored joggers on this channel before and you're not gonna notice it up close um, if you're just kind of normally looking at it, but if you were to hold the joggers up to the light, you're gonna see all those little individual holes just kind of shining through like, oh, that's kind of weird. And it's not the end of the world, but like you're gonna know that it's there, you're gonna notice it, and it's gonna kind of sort of drive you crazy. But I get it, everything is out of stock right now and it's, ugh, it's so annoying. Next question, how do I know how much my denim weighs? I don't have a super precise scale or anything. I remember you mentioning in one of your videos that, uh, that you need to know how much denim weighs. What's that meme? Yes but actually no well it's kind of sort of like that and the reason for that is because um, you don't necessarily need to know exactly how much your denim weighs and by that I mean you don't need to know if it's 12 ounces versus 16 ounces there's gonna be some wiggle room there's obviously gonna be a gray area um, and kind of elaborating on that a little bit all denim is kind of sort of created equal and by that I mean it just kind of comes down to what's in style what's trendy uh, right now what's in style and what's trendy is really kind of lightweight, thinner denim. So if you go to Target or really kind of anywhere that sells jeans right now, their denim, it's not super thick. They don't sell heavy duty denim unless you specifically look for it. Um, there's a couple of brands out there that, you know, they're more so like work pants, like work style type of denim. But that, like, you'll know, you'll pick it up and you'll be like, oh, this is super thick. And I guess to kind of make it a little bit easier for you, imagine taking a pair of chinos and then taking a pair of jeans and you're holding them both in your hands. Notice how they kind of feel the same. Like they're not, they don't, like the, 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 de blah, 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 blah. the denim jeans don't necessarily weigh a whole lot more than the chinos do. Well, there's your answer right there. Yeah, you can just, you don't need to worry about, you don't need to know how much it weighs, don't worry. I like you, you listen to everything that I say and like my daughter does. Now, like I was saying earlier, the reason why I like to kind of elaborate on things on this channel and really kind of dive deep and get into kind of the nitty gritty and real in depth is because I don't wanna skip anything. I, like I said, I remember when I started and I felt like people skipped over a lot of things. You can't necessarily assume that everybody knows what it is that you're talking about. You can't assume that everybody automatically knows that the weight of your denim really isn't that big of a deal. 
it is a big deal, which you will figure out as time goes along. But if you're just getting started, you want to dive into it, you don't know that. So how nice is it to just have someone tell you that in a video and say, hey, um, your denim weighs this much right here. Maybe use this needle. If your denim weighs, let's say, between 14 ounces to 24 ounces, yeah, you can use a denim needle. But anywhere from 8 to 14 ounces, eh, it's okay. <laughs> like this one. <laughs> Why does my thread color matter um, on my stitch if nobody's going to see the stitch? Oh man, I, I love that question. And the reason why I love that question is because you saw that video. You, oh yeah, you saw that video where I showed you that janky red shirt that I've got that's got black, uh, it's got black thread on the inside of it. Um, to answer your question, no, dude, it, it totally does not matter. But again, piggybacking off of what I already said, like I want to make sure that I teach you the right way, but I still do that. I still kind of mix and match what it is that I'm sewing. Um, if I'm if I'm making an actual tutorial, I'm gonna match up the color of my thread to my garment because, well, it's just the kind of it's the professional thing to do. But if I'm going on a binge myself and it's it's hot, it's summertime right now. I just went on a straight up binge on a whole bunch of t-shirts. Did I care about switching up the thread in between projects between the white shirt, the gray shirt, the black shirt, the red blue? No, I didn't at all. Um, in fact, now that I think about it, I, don't, I think every single one of those shirts that I tailored has black thread in it. So really, it comes down to personal preference because at the end of the day, yeah, nobody's going to notice it, but you are, and just kind of do it the right way the first time. Develop those good steps and those good habits the first time around because next thing you know, you're going to look in your closet and you're going to see like a, a white t-shirt with black thread in it and then a green t-shirt with red thread in it. It's going to just, it doesn't just... Don't, don't be me. I hope I answered your questions thoroughly for you, man. And again, seriously, I really appreciate uh, all those questions you're asking. And if you guys have any more you want to leave down in the comments, um, be sure to let me know. That's all I got for you. SD out. Deuces.